them away into the Lincolnshire countryside here. I'll just show you now. As you see, uh, a lot of oranges in it. So I'm going to use a, a ground again of a colour, in this case cadmium red, so that that can glow all the way through my brush strokes, as I did on a recent cruise scene. You might remember this one. It worked very well for that. I think it will for this. I want to keep this piece nice and loose and lively. So I'll paint it with this cadmium red totally and we'll use that as a ground showing between the brush strokes of the greens and yellows and golds. Really get some vibrance going again. There we are. All I've got to do is draw my design on the basic composition and I'll do that with a piece of chalk or harder pastel I think later on. Let's get this final coat nice and even. That'll do it I think. A little bit uneven but uh, it'll match the effect I reckon. I'm just going to use some white chalk now to draw out the composition. I'm working loosely within that, as long as the drawing is as near diameter as right, should be okay. I just want these basic shapes to be clear. <clears throat> well, that should be enough to start the drawing off anyway. So we can start painting now, I reckon. Well, I've got the white chalk drawing done and the ground on. And we'll make a start. Nice uh, snowy scene outside today, not too much of it. I took a few photographs yesterday, don't know how long it'll last, but if there's a bit more I might take some more photos we can go out painting. Anyway, let's get on with this uh, nice bright autumn scene here, see how we can handle this with the red glowing through. Funny how life goes, isn't it? Um, and at the moment, three days ago, I just told her I've got cancer of the kidney, two cancers on one kidney, so I've got to have that removed in uh, a few weeks' time. Um, so my premonitions about leaving France due to my health and age were proved to be absolutely right and it's as well I have come back to England and can sort this here and uh, get my life stabilised. <clears throat> Who knows what's going to happen next minute, so we've got to make the most of it as I feel I always have done, so even if anything drastic happened I feel uh, I made the most of my time in my 70 years, but hopefully I've got a few more years yet to get this sorted out. And let's see if um, the pleasure of using colour comes out in this painting today. As I enjoy the rest of my days, I've got a demonstration to do at the end of the week and a workshop to do as well, so plenty to keep me occupied for the moment. Let's get on with it then, shall we? I'm going to be using flat brushes on this mainly, possibly some rounds, um, and uh, some sponges at the end to get the sponge textures. It's rather nice to have the texturing of these leaves. So let's build up um, the blacks first of all, in this case the darks first of all. I'm going to use um, a half inch flat on this. And work up these various deeper tones. When I say black, I'm going to start with actually a very deep Prussian blue and purple and uh, work up the different hues of these darks at first, just to establish them between. Perhaps it's the background here that's deeper than the, the tree, and it's a bit uh, darker back here. And don't take away all the red, let the red glow through in between because this is part of the purpose of this and I can just use these marks, I always make my marks about the objects I'm painting. Um, this will seem dark at first but in fact when I put the deeper colours onto this it's not going to seem nearly as dark shortly. just want to build up where all these colours are at the minute. Greeny blue coming down through there that I want to find. Really push your colours, I'm going to push the colours in this photograph to make a really vibrant impressionist piece. If I use the brush edge on I can paint quite fine lines rather than using a round brush. It's the same down here, bring this tree down right through here and I can paint the lights around this afterwards. In fact the tree here is the, is the deeper, the, the darker tone. And gets quite warm in fact in its tone. Over some of this again, it's just, just working things out and I'll be layering this up so it's not a, an a la primer <coughs> uh, 
heavy fat on lean, it's just going to be gradually working up my, my textures and lights and darks, letting some of this red just blow through branches. I did one in a similar way this time last year where I did a snow scene. I'll show it to you now. And built up all of that as well as the branches with that, bit by bit by bit. But it's such a complicated piece. And all of this, this texturing is so important, I think, in a painting like this. We've got uh, so many different ways to do a painting, haven't we? So many different ways. This keeps me occupied. What do you say, dog? Mm, she says, comfortable us lying here. This dark is coming up all the way through here as well. Right up into here, the mottled way, just letting the, the red glow through. <coughs> There's no point in having a ground if we don't let it work for us. We don't let the ground show through. I'm using the brush to paint a little bit more thinly now. I'm just tickling it over these surfaces. Now let's use it more heavily and uh, work up some of these darks. See where I put a slab on, or I can just let the red glow through. Yeah, the lovely warm glow through the cool blue. Let's come on to a purple here as well now to start to feel these the vibrance of these colours one to another. flat of the brush you see I'm using now. I was using the edge earlier to get the thinner lines. I'm going to reach right up there so you can see the, the canvas. I've got the um, canvas offset to me. Nice and loose. We start loose we can finish tight. So I start off nice and loose like this. I can get tighter and tighter as I go along. I can't start tight and go loose again. That's almost a certainty. Lovely dark is coming down into here. And then it gets <coughs> a lighter purple, lighter mauve coming through to there. Perhaps even a little bit of the lizard I was saying earlier. Because I'm working against the red ground, it's not quite so easy to see the um, if the red's against it. I just have to play those back. Yeah, this is a bit of a lizard and crimson going onto the with the cadmium red. Just changing my colours as I go along. I'm going to work that a little and crimson up and through here as well. So we've got one red showing through another, the cool and the warmer hues. Already it's quite exciting. We've got fun things happening, don't you think? It's a lovely loose way to work and to feel these branches. We always want to make our marks about the objects we're doing. Whether it's with a pencil edge of an object or whether it's uh, inside of an object, try and make your marks about what you're painting always. It's so important. If you're doing a drawing and you put a flat tram line around something, it will flatten it. But you know, if every mark has a meaning, if your mark is sensitive when you're doing the outside of the of a glass, for instance, and that's the glass is light and dark on the edge. If you paint that light and dark thick and thinner line, you see even when I'm doing these branches now, I'm feeling the, the branches coming down as they go thick and thin. The branches will go thick, thinner, 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 thinner. They don't go thick, thin, thick, thin usually unless there's a, a burr in them. And the burr is a cancer, talking of cancers. Um, which makes the branches grow unevenly. And you get this beautiful figuring which we can use in veneers. Diversing a bit, but make our marks expressive and about the objects we're doing. So we say the, the edge of the glass, if the, if the line is thick, thin, thick, thin, or it disappears where there's a highlight, then you need to do that um, with your line. Because if you just use a tram line, in most cases, and there's always an opposite to a rule, there's no one, one way to paint. There are, no, there are times when it's good to paint just a tram line around something. Uh, as I say, there are so many ways to paint. There's no, there's no one right, right, right and wrong way. There are things that don't work in painting. 
in colours and were amateurish, but there's no one one rule. All I'm doing is trying to help you bake a cake. In other words, you have the right recipe and it tastes good. But uh, <clears throat> each of our tastes are individual, and what one person may like, what is good for the goose, may not be good for the gander. And uh, it may be that your recipe for the cake has to change or be changed for somebody else. So here we are, the same with painting, where we need to change the recipe to each person's different taste, whether it be an animal painting where the customer wants every single hair painted, just like a photograph. It might not be such a good work of art that way, but it gives the customer what they want. And it's a technical achievement. Whereas if you're just painting the dog as a painting, you might paint it much more loosely in the, in the light and the movement of the animal. And so it's courses for courses, as they say. It's, you choose the best method and medium the subject is one of my previous videos. Do we get, you get a feeling of this light here? You can see how I'm painting the paint thick and thin with the brush, tip of the brush and sideways on to get the textures right, and the feel of the light. And the paint just the red paint being allowed to just glow through and not taking it all out. There's no point in having a red ground if we're going to take it all out. Letting the, the red just glow through as I, I want to, don't want to take it out completely. Just let it glow through a bit here. I want a bit more green colour. I'm going to paint it a bit more thickly so the green stands out. If I don't want it quite as strong, then I'll let it go a bit thinner to let the red glow through. Or I'll bring the purple on in just a minute. Or the uh, lesser and crimson in some cases. I'm just going to put little bits of colour as I feel um, you know, other colours in. So we've used uh, Prussian blue and um, now I'm onto the sap green. We've had a bit of well, some crimson in places as well. Just go back to that uh, deep blue again. I want it down here. So there's a sort of grey green colour down there. So I'm going to, have to mix up in a minute, probably using the alizarin green coming into here. And the red just being allowed to glow through all the time. Possibly I'm going to need to mix some alizarin crimson with the, with the sap green to get the sort of grey I'm, I'm going to be after. So many ways to make greys. Grey basically, if we take brown and blue and white, brown is red, yellow and blue anyway, but um, Brown and blue will give you a lovely blue grey. There's so many ways we can make greys as well. Uh, and another very nice grey is alizarin crimson and viridian and white. You wouldn't believe for an oil paint, not for watercolour, for oil or acrylic. It can make you a beautiful grey, which would be towards the, the, what, the red with the alizarin or towards the, the green with the viridian. Oh, it's nice to pick up a brush again. I need to do this. It's, I've been a bit put off and lost recently because of the move from France to, to here. So much stress. I had to move out from France. Um, this house sold and I only had three weeks to pack and put into storage my entire home on my own there with the help of one good friend who stored the stuff for me and managed to arrange to get it over and we did all right. But it means that uh, my life in France has got to change. It was every summer over there, and of course I was selling out work well there as well, which won't be as easy now. I might still like to go back and have some of my life there, I must admit, <coughs> and visit, but we'll have to see what, what life does, where my health goes, and uh, what direction it takes. You see the sort of greys we're getting now by using the the greens with the with the blues and the warm colours coming through. Grey isn't just black and white. Remembering that if you're an impressionist, you wouldn't be using much pure white anyway, because according to the impressionist, where there's light, there must be colour. So white is always going to be affected by a colour reflecting upon it. So I save my black and my white until the very end of a painting normally, when I 
just want to bring something out the final strokes because you know you can't go blacker than black and you know you can't go whiter than white white a shade of pale as the song once went I can't do it um, but you've got to bring up your darks with dark colours and then when you come at the very end back into it and just want to lighten it up and pull those colours out you can come back and and uh, just put a little bit of black in here and there just to highlight and bring out those. Could have to put some fresh paint into this palette ready for the demonstration. Which I should be showing you. You know I like to try and share all of these things with you. So I'll try and film it so you can see. It's going to be a cafe scene. A uh, French cafe scene with a waiter standing outside and some people sitting there. Memories of pre-Covid and uh, as it's getting back to now I guess, uh, though as I speak they're just bringing in new regulations over here again to yet again, not to have lockdown, but yet again uh, make us a bit more aware of what needs to be done. So we don't all catch a new strain of it. There's going to be a lot more light colour needs to come through there. <coughs> I'm just going to use the brush thinly and drag, almost drag with the dry brush, the paint across the, the red areas here just to get the feeling of... these shadowed leaves in the background there. I'm going to put these darks on fairly roughly. I'm going to bring the sky in and around these, these shapes. To give the idea of branches and leaves just blowing through. I'm planning ahead at the moment. I'm planning my, my leaf structures ahead. Keep the marks in perspective occasionally so that we're leading the eye into the picture like this. See, I'm bringing the brush that way rather than just straight downwards. <coughs> Lead the eye in. These are the Time 6 uh, acrylics, heavy body acrylics from Specialist Crafts. I find them a very useful and reasonably priced paint. They are a good heavy body, but um, being a slightly cheaper paint, and I say they're very reasonably priced, about four or five pounds a pot, um, <clears throat> then they aren't quite as dark in the very dark colours as one would like in pigment. The light colours are great and the medium colours are alright and the Prussian blue I was just using is in fact theirs. <coughs> so they're not bad, but I tend to use a um, Sennelier, the uh, heavy body Sennelier's in the plastic bags for um, <coughs> my very darks and one or two of the other colours that uh, the specialists don't do. Which is, uh, if you were mixing this, it's a colour, it's sort of, uh, I would say it would be yellow ochre and a bit of emerald um, <coughs> and white to make this, watch it's having warmer uh, green here. Bring these brush strokes down just over the top, slightly dry brush and slightly dragging it across to get the feeling of these leaves with the red still glowing through, we're not going to lose that red. Nice loose brush strokes just feel away across the surfaces. You can see these opposites now, the green's playing against the red. Because we've got the opposites in the colour circle happening there, haven't we? And I'm still using the lines of the branches to paint it between the, the tree here. Between the branches and the tree. A bit not lighter yet, but the lovely light shining through the branches here and onto the branches themselves trying to bring out it's right up through these leaves turning from their summer colours into the beautiful golds and yellows that seem to disappear so quickly this year they were there one minute and then not the next and I just got time to take a few photographs and in this case my partner had her mobile phone these mobile phones are wonderful these days some of them have better photography uh, facilities than my SLRs I think the quality these days of these cameras has changed so much they are available to everybody now 
just take a quick shot carry your phone around with you as I don't tend to unfortunately I just find it too uh, restrictive having a mobile on me all the time and to worry about losing it or but the way the branches and the leaves come in here the tip of the brush again I'm making marks about I'm not copying exactly I'm making marks about the marks that are here all these grasses and bits of nettle and so on and the little bits of leaf that are breaking out into this here Definitely going to have to get some more paint out and redo this palette before my demo shortly. Love doing demonstrations, so if you want me to come along and do a workshop or demo with you, um, not that expensive. Uh, £90 for a two hour demonstration within 30 miles and just a bit of pressure on top otherwise. And, uh, bring this texture of these greens through here so that they, it, the whole thing is united all the time and we've got one colour, each colour reflecting off the other or making sure that we don't have a separate that's I think one of the things amateurs tend to do they put blue sky, green leaves, brown soil and they forget that the, the green leaves can be reflecting the blue sky once I start to plough in these lighter colours see the difference but normally I work from my mid-tones down to my darks and then back up again but in this case I've worked from my my darks the main thing is that I should enjoy it but uh, I want to make the most of all every day I've got and uh, events like this that are just happening to me certainly bring that forward and make you realize that every day is important to make the most of it. If I can share my pleasures with you and share these things with you as well and it gives you pleasure and fun and even helps you to paint and enjoy as I am then that's helping to make my life worthwhile and thank you very much for watching and letting me know that you've watched as well because unless you come back to me and, and speak to me and say hi Peter really enjoyed that film or can you do this for us or can you do that for us or whatever I don't know and you know, I just have to hope you're enjoying them. I don't do many in-depth films now, and I'm telling you the colours that are going on here. In this case, it's a little bit of emerald and uh, of radiant and um, yellow ochre will make this colour, this green. You can see I'm working over the red ground and the colours I've been using. But most of my in-depth films, I've already done them. Don't need to keep doing them for you. Uh, I've already done, uh, at the end of a brush, most of these techniques matter of finding them but what I'm doing is sharing the pleasure that I'm having in these individual pictures with you. You can see the tones coming when I lose this lot of red that makes a lot more sense. I get the water going in there. There's a very quick difference in putting in the marks that are letting the light show through or reflect and using the edge of the brush and then coming back and using the flat of the brush. I think trees are very explosive things. They're, they start from like the smallest acorn and they hit the ground and then explode up in a mushroom of the stem leaping out into the twigs, exploding out into mushrooms of leaves. And then once the tree has grown, it becomes the opposite and the uh, leaves drop off like an atom bomb and the leaves all fall down. So that red's glowing through that, you see, and we're starting to get this effect of light. What's what I'm doing at first is I'm painting an impression, an effect of light here. So I'm going to use these few colours, the Prussian blue and a little bit of purple and uh, a wee bit of alizarin once, but generally speaking it's, made, it's mainly the Prussian blue and, uh, and, this, and, and this sap green and now down to this uh, warm mossy green which we make with the 
yellow ochre and emerald or yellow ochre and uh, radium will do it. That's if you want to use colour. I mean really use colour and I'm not there. If I was there I'd possibly be using a different palette again and uh, even more colour quite possibly. Edge of the brush again, the flat of the brush I mean rather than the, the end to get the uh, feeling of leaves coming in the light coming down through here. Just tip of the brush to find these bunches of leaf shapes coming up. <coughs> so this will hopefully make sense when I start to paint the lighter the lighter colours on and the, the blues and so on into this and the really lovely oranges and these autumn colours which I haven't yet even touched on. Nor have I finished with all the darks yet either. I've got to come back into here and go darker yet as well in places. Let's go back to the darks and I want to get in some of the richer, deeper purpley darks. Let's take some deep purple in fact. <coughs> Add a little bit of um, alizarin crimson to it. Let's have some lovely deep warms happening down into here as well. My alizarin. Not easy to see. There's so much colour going on in fact but it's quite difficult for you to see. But now I'm using a, a very deep purple with some alizarin crimson to <coughs> get some of these warmer greys coming through here. Especially in the foreground where it's going to be at its darkest. So here we have a little bit of black with the Prussian blue shadows there. It isn't until you put something darker on that you realise how much lighter the other colours were before this. And I'm going to have to come back with these colours at the end and do the finer details when I put in the, the sky and so on in between here. It's just so you can really understand different ways of working and you don't have to use a very fine brush all the time to do your, your marks. I shall finish off with a finer brush but just to get these basic colours in, it's surprising how you can use these flats and filberts to do a lot of your work. Start to get this lattice work of branches that are happening behind. So I can bring my lights over and then come back in and re-establish them later. At the moment it's just to feel where things actually are and that was too heavy to think I just that back a bit. I'm not having music this time deliberately so that you can hear what I'm saying as I paint. I get so used to doing this that sometimes I actually find myself chatting away, forgetting the camera's not even there, because I'm so used to having a camera on when painting like this. And again over here, these very darks that are happening places through here and look at the difference in how much darker that actually is than the previous darks I've put on. That's got most of our, our darks established. And so we can come back and do more later. We'll need to lighter as well. Now blues, cools. We've got fairly warm colours on there at the moment, warm greens and although the uh, Prussian was obviously quite cool. Let's just take a purple here and just come down and do this tree. So I'm still playing on the warms. Violet to mid purple. So it's like a chess move, doesn't it? Violet to mid purple takes purple. <coughs> 